Hey guys, Mitch back at it with another weekly tech tip video. Today we're going to talk about five best practices for the administration of your ZFS storage pools. All right, so for best practice number one, we're going to talk about ZFS installs. So you're always going to want to install ZFS on a 64-bit kernel. While you may be able to get it working on a 32-bit kernel, you're going to run into some stability issues. And that's because of the way that ZFS handles virtual memory address space. So just as a hard and fast rule, stick with 64-bit kernels. All right, so for rule number two, we're going to talk about RAM. Now, you're always going to want to use ECC memory with your ZFS storage pool. And that's because ZFS can actually use ECC memory to ensure data consistency. So the ZFS ARC is built into RAM, and it's used as a high-performant read cache, which stores the system's most frequently and most recently used data. So the more RAM you can put in the system, the better. So you're going to hear lots of different rules thrown around, like one gigabyte of RAM per one terabyte of storage, but it really all comes down to your specific use case. Just know that by default, half of your available RAM is going to be used for your ARC, and if you plan on implementing an L2 ARC, it's going to be for every 100 gigabytes of L2 ARC, two gigabytes of system RAM is going to be used to map that L2 arc. All right, so for rule number three, we're going to talk about disk scrubbing. And no, I don't mean taking your disks out, bringing them over to the sink, and scrubbing them with the rest of your pans. OK, so all jokes aside, ZFS scrub is the best way to handle the dreaded bit rot. Every time ZFS reads a block, it compares that block to its checksum, and then automatically fixes it if need be. However, there may be data that you write to your zpool, and then it doesn't get read again for a very long time. Fortunately, this data is not then automatically protected from bit rot. This is the reason why we have data scrubs. It's best practice is to schedule at least one scrub a month, and some may want to do it as often as even one time a week, although this isn't completely necessary. While you can still use your zpool during a scrub, you may want to schedule these for off hours or downtime, because while it's not too intensive, it does handle some I.O. on your disks. All right, for best practice number four, we're going to talk about vdevs and zpools. Now, there are many different ways to set up VDEVs and zpools with different parities, different striping, and different mirroring. So for that reason, I'm not really going to go into those, but I'm just going to give you some do's and don'ts for you to use on your VDEVs. So first, you definitely want to try to keep all the VDEVs in your pool the same size. If you don't do this, your ZFS will end up using one VDEV more than the others, which can lead to some performance issues. So next, I would recommend if your data is extremely mission critical and you don't follow very stringent backup protocols, you're going to want to use at least a RAID Z2 to give you two parity disks in your VDEVs. So due to the resilvering process being extremely stressful on the disks, if you have a RAID Z1 and you have a disk go down, this is prime time for another disk to drop out as it's so stressful on the disks. So you're definitely going to want to consider at least a RAID Z2 for your VDEVs if it's crucial data. So for best practice number five, I want to talk about ZFS snapshots. They truly are a wonderful thing. So essentially, they're just a read-only copy of your data. These can be created nearly instantly and initially consume no additional disk space within your pool. While this may sound like magic, it's actually very real. So as the active data set begins to change, the snapshot will then begin to grow in size as it continues to refer to the original data. Snapshots are amazing because they allow you to keep many versions of the same file. You can set snapshots to run completely automatically on a set schedule. Remember, however, these are never a replacement for a proper backup. All right, so those are some best practices for administering your ZFS storage pools. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave it in the comments section down below. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscription because we put videos like this out every single week. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.